How's it going? So, I realize that you only get to bend your knees so many times in your life, and I have some horrible inefficiencies in this shop where I need to bend my knees pointlessly. One of which being my chop saw. Every time I want to use it, I gotta bend down, pull it out from under the bench, and cut on the floor like a peasant. So today we're gonna fix that by making an automatic flippy outy thing on the bench. Let's do it. I'm just making this up as we go along. I mocked up something in Fusion 360. By in Fusion 360, I was gonna be using some linear rails with these linear bearings. I thought it'd be real easy to find an 11 millimeter rod in America, but this is America. We don't we don't use that stinking metric system. So I'm gonna try and use some drawer slides. This may not be the best way to do it, but it's what I got right now, and if it fails, well, you won't see this video. <laughs> so this larger piece is gonna be welded to the bottom of the bench, and we're doing it like that, because I'd rather lift one heavy thing and weld it on than build this whole thing upside down underneath the bench. That would be a horrible YouTube video. These two pieces will be hinged, so we can flip it up like that, and the saw mounts on top. We got our flippy. Now then, I kinda wanna mess around with the linear actuator I got and see exactly how to position it to make this thing work right. So now, we gotta figure out exactly where to mount this to where this will be as close to 90 degrees as we can get it when it's fully retracted and flat when it's fully out. So this is just gonna be a lot of tacking and grinding and tacking and grinding. Half a million tacks later, we got there. But we got more than 90 degrees. Would you look at that? So because we've been strong-armed into using drawer slides as linear rails, I'm going to end up welding myself into a corner just to make it vaguely strong enough. So we got to figure out our motor mount now. And the motor we're using is this DC garage door opener. And we have a little sprocket gear that goes on there. And this is gonna mount right here. And we're gonna use a bike chain, sort of like a timing belt on a CNC machine. Not the best matchup in the world. This is a job for oversized holes in fender washers. You might be wondering why I'm not using the plasma cutter to make these little brackets. And you know, sometimes it's good to get back to the basics. Reconnect with your grinder. Let's be honest, I'm just too lazy to take the quarter inch plate off the gantry. If this works, why do I ever use the cordless? So with this little, is it a pinion or a sprocket? Or a sprocket pinion? With this little gear on here, we can now kind of line this up and try and center it up on that hole. And that, that way we know right where this thing needs to mount. Nice if I had a Sharpie. There we go. Pro tip. Anything harder than the material that you need a Sharpie for is a Sharpie. So hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here. The motor will mount right here with a little pinion gear on there to pull on the chain. So I need to bring the chain up from underneath this platform where it'll be anchored on the far ends using some idler pulleys. And I ordered these off of Amazon. They look like they were anodized aluminum in the picture, but those are straight up 3D printed, man. On further inspection, I found some ejector pins. So this was injection molded. So that gives me a little bit of hope. It said it's for a little crotch rocket bike. So it, we'll, we'll use them. It's what we got.
Would you look at that? You know, I've never built anything using snap rings before and I feel like I just stepped out of a cave I've been living in my whole life and seen the light for the first time. That is nice. So that is our rolly flippy bit all built. Now, on the base plate here, we gotta find a way that we can anchor the chain down and tension it. So we gotta build a couple blocks. And I think we'll build these blocks out of aluminum because it's very easy to mill. What happened? I crashed the machine. I never claimed to be a machinist. This is the fixed side. The chain will go in there with a pin through this hole. This is the adjustable side. Same thing, chain in there, pin through there. And then this hole is tapped and we'll have a 3 8 inch bolt running between these so I can tighten it up and tighten up the chain. So we got our chain hardware mounted here. Now we can finally put our linear rails on. I wanna be able to remove these just in case they don't work or they need to be replaced or whatever, or if I have to put real linear rails in. So I think the best way I can do that while keeping this fairly strong is I'm gonna have these pieces of angle iron weld the drawer slides on the side of them, drill some holes and just have this held on with bolts. All right, to mount this inner drawer slide, I need a little bit more mounting than these like six holes that are in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the plasma cutter to cut a notch all the way along here, and then I can set it in there and weld it from the back side. All right, got them welded up, got them bolted on. They both slide just fine. Now then, I'm gonna set it over here with the drawer slides retracted. That way we know that they are right where they need to be. Then I can tack it in place, pull it out, and then just weld it. All right, got the goods. Let's put this thing together. Well, Let's give this thing a test, shall we? I haven't even tested this motor with no load yet, so my fingers are very crossed. Oh! Would you look at that? Can it push itself? Easy. So now, whenever I want my saw, I just hit my switch. Comes forward. And easy as cake. Just move these connectors over and we can extend the saw downwards. That linear actually really doesn't sound great, does it? Well, now for the part we've all been dreading. I gotta figure out how to work the electrical. So for this project, I wanted to avoid using an Arduino because using unnecessary Arduinos just seems to be my thing. We're gonna change that. So here's the full assembly. Ignore the linear rails in the drawing. I'm still just wishing I had real linear rails. In order to sense the position of the thing, there will be a limit switch here, 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 and here, and it will be controlled by four relays and a dual pole, dual throw switch. With the switch in one position, it'll power the motor until it hits the limit switch, which will trigger the relay and switch the power to the linear actuator. Once the linear actuator is fully extended, it'll hit the top limit switch and cut the ground on that circuit. In the opposite direction, it'll power the linear actuator till it hits the limit switch, swap the power over to the motor till it gets to the end of its run, and cut the ground on that circuit. I hope that all makes sense. Let's see it in action, huh? Ta-da! Got it all wired up. I didn't film any of the wiring. 
when working on electrical stuff, I'm better just putting my headphones in and going in my own little world and getting stuff done. And you know, I, I'd rather not show that on YouTube. Hey, hey, you, you, I don't like your girlfriend, no way, no way. Think you need a new one. Anyway, got it on this toggle switch now. So uh, now I can just hit it, keep it on. and it'll run through its whole cycle. Now we get the fun, fun job of crawling under the bench and welding this thing in place. All righty, it's in there now. I'm just gonna wire it up to the power supply that runs the electromagnet. Oh, I'll be right back. All right, got it all wired up. Uh, same as before, got to hit the button to turn on the power supply, and then this unsuspecting switch. What do you want that? Look at that! Now, as we expected, it's a little sloppy with the drawer slide, so I think we're gonna have to add a leg on here. I think first, let's put the saw on and see if it'll carry the weight of it. Alrighty, it's fastened on there. Now's the real moment of truth. Oh. Really sounds bad at the end of that stroke. And there she goes. That linear actuator is really struggling, but if we need to replace it with a better one, that won't be that difficult. Now then, to fix the wobble. We did it, man. So now, just gotta turn the power supply on, flip this little switch, and then wait like 20 minutes. Now we can just flip our little leg down, and we're good to go. Uh, thinking I might hardwire this into the bench so I don't have to plug it in, cause you know, it's so wildly convenient. Why would I want to plug it in? That is just more work. You might be wondering how I'm gonna cut long pieces with this thing. Well, I got this. And this just slides right on the bench and it's right at the same level as this so I can have that all the way on the other side of the bench and probably support 20 foot sticks. So we're good to go, man. But yeah, it surprisingly worked out, drawer slides and all. This may have been a dumb idea. It does take quite a while to get up, but we'll see how it fits in with my workflow. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it and very excited to not be cutting on the floor anymore. Now, as for the laser video, it's coming, guys. Don't worry, <laughs> it's coming. It's very difficult, but I'm still working on it and hopefully my next video will be on the laser. So, if you like what you saw, leave a dinger. Think about subscribing and Thank you for watching.